What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be talking about a good versus bad snap down at the top of a route, okay? So we're going to mainly going to be talking about just what you guys need to do to have that sudden drop at the top of the break, that trigger step, and some of the common mistakes that wide receivers make when they're getting in and out of a route, whether it's a comeback route, a curl route, a dig route, anything that involves you having to snap down, okay? So I hope this video gives you some value, teaches you some things that can really improve your game at the top of the route. But also, fellas, if you guys want four weeks of specific drills that wide receivers need to be doing on the field, all broken down into a specific plan. Check out that very first link in the description for our 28-day on-field wide receiver workout plan. So what it is, it's a four-week program. We give you step-by-step -step drills with specific sets, reps, rest periods, rest days, conditioning days, all the above. And then we give you a 30-minute instructional video where we break down each day of the plan, break down each drill, and show you full speed examples. So I hope you guys could check that out. Very excited about this on our website. Very first link in the description. Let's get started. So first route right here is going to be a comeback route, right? So this is going to be the more so like like a, an example that needs improvement, right? Obviously, this guy's playing at a very, very high level of football. So he makes the same mistakes that we make at the top of the route, right? So again, this is not meant to just criticize him. This is meant to, and I'm sure he's had people tell him this before, but this is meant to give you guys value and show you what the difference is between like an elite comeback route and a route that needs some work, right? So you see when he gets up into this route, the easy thing that everybody's going to say is, oh, he takes too many steps at the top of the break. Well, that's not necessarily wrong. Yeah, you always want, you can always be better. You can always eliminate steps. You can always eliminate time. But the thing that it is, it's not about steps. It's about eliminating time, like I said, right? And how we eliminate time is that sudden drop of your hips. So let's talk about this. So you see when he gets into it, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then maybe like seven right here and he's out of that break. The only thing, how he could eliminate those extra steps, because I think seven's a little bit too much. I would try to limit it to five. Five is probably a more realistic number, especially if you're kind of newer to this, is that hip drop, right? So there was really no like level change. That's the main thing that you want to know on a comeback, right? So you see how he just kind of leans back into this. He starts doggy paddling. He, I call that milking the cow, what a lot of people call beating the drums. That's going to make you slow because the faster you chatter your hands right here, the faster the feet are going to chatter, right? That's why people teach the whole beat the drum thing in the first place. And so you don't have dead feet at the top of the break, but they don't know how to actually snap down, right? So it's very important that when we get to this spot, when we're getting into this break, there's got to be a level change and that level change has got to be violent. So what do I mean by that? Is that you got to drop your hips, almost like a lunge, almost like you're falling forward and you got to catch your yourself on one leg and you almost want to think of it like you got a string attached from your chin to your knee and that string is going to pull you down. You drop your hips, that string pulls your chin down to your knee so you could get to that explosive position. Because again, if I got a DB who's running stride for stride with me, right? They were working a man coverage situation. He's hip to hip. I got the outside release and I give him this kind of slow breakdown right here. This DB is going to be doing the exact same thing. But when I have a sudden drop of my hips and I'm violent with my hips, that doesn't give that DB time to react. And we're going to get into that into the next example. I'm going to show you guys what it should look like, right? So just make sure, fellas, that it's not a slowdown because that's just an indicator to the DB of what you're going to be doing. You can't be here. We can't come off the line great. We can't come off the line with as much explosion as he had. And then I see how he kind of raises his pad level up and his chest pops up and he exposes that number. That's the issue. That's the thing that we want to try to eliminate as a receiver. I want to keep a good explosive pad level. I want to stay in stride. I want to continue to pump my arms. My eyes stay straight forward and I drop my hips. I don't want to slow down with my hips. I don't want to cruise into the break. I don't want to sink my hips. I want to have a violent drop of my hips because that's the only way, fellas, you're able to decelerate efficiently and create energy at the top of the break when running full speed. The whole entire goal of this whole route running thing is to be able to have speed into the break, create energy at the break so you could turn that energy into acceleration, right? But if I slow down three yards before and then I take all these choppy steps because there's no level change, then I'm not going to be able to get out of this thing fast. So that's what we got to make sure that we do. So let's watch it full speed and now we'll get into the good example, okay? So now, obviously needs some work. Obviously a talented receiver. Just again, got to make sure that we're eliminating the most time possible at the top of the break and creating explosion. So now let's take a look at this route here. So let's watch the differences, right? Selling vertical all the way. It's a sudden drop. And now this is that difference, right? This is that difference from an NFL caliber receiver to a college caliber receiver. And this is something you guys can really pull and take to your own game. So when we're getting up into this route, you see how everything he does, he's in the same stride. He's in the same pad level. I can't tell what number he is. And this DB's running hip to hip with him. Very similar to the situation that they were just working, right? So what's going to get this DB? DB is such a hard position to play, fellas, because they don't know when we're going to be making this break. They don't know when I'm going to be snapping down. They, everything's a guessing game, right? So DBs are looking for what we call indicators. In the last clip, the indicator that we saw was the pad level raised, and then we started to slow down. Then we got out of the break, right? If we can keep the same stride, there's no speed change. I keep the same 
pad level. My eyes stay straight forward. I keep driving my arms. There are no indicators for this DB to go off of. Everything to, about this route right now says fade to this DB. So that's what we need. Now, this is what's going to make you better. This snap down right here, this comeback route. That snap, that violent drop of his hips where he's getting low. And look what he's doing. Chin is going to his knee. It's like there's a string attached, right? You see how he's here? There's a level change, right? He's running up tall, level change. And when you could have that level change and get to this low explosive position, that's what allows you to stop. That's what allows you to break on a dime, right? When you guys snap down, it's not about, okay, I'm going to run art. Right, I'm going to slow down. Then I'm going to snap down. Then I'm going to drop my hips and try to get out of this thing. No, you got to be running full speed. And the snap down, the hip drop is the thing that slows you down. That's the thing that makes you decelerate, right? And there are a lot of things that tie into that. You got to have great core strength. You got to have great lower body strength. Hamstrings and glutes are super important. Those always need to be activated when you're making a cut. So that's the stuff that you guys need to be able to work on. You got to have great ankle stability, knee stability. All those things apply into this, right? Like that workout program I was talking about in the very beginning of this, all those drills, they all work on that specific thing. And that's exactly what you need to be able to make these efficient cuts running full speed. A lot of people will say that, oh, you can't teach this. You absolutely 100% can teach this stuff. This is not so if you're, you're very limited in your thinking. If you think that, oh, well, the, the only some people can do this kind of stuff. That's not the case, right? This is something that I've seen, something that I've taught, something that I've done. This is something that can 100% be taught, right? So this is how you guys get in and out of breaks better. That snap, not the slowdown. The slowdown is what's going to make a DB be able to sit on this route. A snap down, a sudden change of direction is going to make this DB fly by because, again, the low man's going to win. That's the rule in football. And you see how high this DB is because now look at the DB. He's reacting off us. He's taking all those choppy steps. As a, as a receiver, what was the last guy doing? He was taking choppy steps. That was his first choppy step. He took another one. He took about seven steps, right? Look how many steps this DB takes. One, two, three, four, five, six seven. And he's out of that, right? He's taking the same amount of steps that that other receiver was taking, right? And that other receiver slowed down. So that DB is going to slow down. So he's probably going to be able to take less steps. This is that DB taking seven without having a violent hip drop, knowing when to break. It, it's all relative, fellas. You guys got to make sure that we're eliminating time spent. It's not about steps. It's about eliminating time, but being able to sell vertical until the last possible second. This is a great route right here. Great example of what to do. Great example of a good snap down technique at the top of a comeback route. So watch it again. Full speed. Speed. Perfect job selling vertical. Everything about this is a fade until we snap down. There's a level change with your pad level and you're bringing that chin straight to your knee. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, fellas, really appreciate all the comments you guys leave below. So if you guys have any comments, any questions, anything, um, that I can help you with, please don't hesitate to leave those below. I always, always appreciate the feedback. And again, fellas, 28-day on-field wide receiver workout plan, four weeks of specific exercises to help your guys' route running, press releases, catching ability, balance, and explosiveness at the top of the break, all broken down to a set plan. We have a 30-minute instructional video where we break down every single day of the plan, show you live, full-speed examples, all the above. So I hope you guys could check that out. Very first link in the description. I'll see you guys next time.